What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, checking out the new Samsung Galaxy Tab S2, a sequel to last year's Tab S, which once again returns with these stunning Super AMOLED displays, which is really unique in the world of tablets, mostly using LCD displays. Now we have two sizes to take a look at here, 8 inch and 9.7 inch, and they start off at 399 and 499 for 32 gigs with Wi-Fi. But of course you can buy an LTE version if you want. Now for the most part, they share identical specs, the same screen resolution, same cameras, same Exynos processor and the same set of dual stereo speakers and the new fingerprint sensor. Now there are two major differences between this and the previous generation. The biggest one obviously is the new 4x3 aspect ratio of the display as opposed to the widescreen of the previous Tab S. The new thinner design also picks up a metal frame which looks a little more upscale and also feels a little more rigid than the plastic of the previous generation. So let's get to the unboxing of both of our tablet sizes here so we can take a close look at them. Boxes are pretty familiar for Samsung. We have a little lid that pops off once you cut some tape along the back. So the first thing we'll see here are the two tablets on the top which are wrapped in these fabric envelopes. So if you wanna take them out neatly, just pull the tab along the back and the tablet should slide right out. Now we're not done yet. We still have some plastic along the back to peel off. We also have a small piece of plastic covering the camera lens which we can peel off with the fingernail. So there we go, we have our 9.7 inch and eight inch tablet side by side, and this is the gold color. So the bezel and back kind of have the champagne color. It's fairly subtle here, but this is a new color for this year. But if you want to go classic, there is white and black. So setting those tablets aside, next up, we're going to take a look at the accessories, which are identical for both tablets. First up, we have a SIM ejection tool for removing the SD card slot on the side. That's new for a Samsung tablet. We also get some paperwork, which includes a quick start guide to help you set up and identify the ports and buttons on your tablet, as well as your warranty and safety and regulatory information. We also get a standard micro USB 2.0 charging cable, so no USB Type-C here. And we also get our wall adapter, which is just a standard Samsung wall adapter. There is no rapid charging here. So taking a look at both tablets side by side, of course, we have those stunning Super AMOLED displays. They both have the same resolution, of course, over different sizes, which makes the eight inch more pixel dense. So we have a resolution of 1536 by 2048, good for 264 PPI on the 9.7 inch model. And the same resolution on the eight inch gives us 320 PPI. And as you can see, the layout of the tablets kind of encourage portrait use. So you have your home button and your Android keys toward the bottom. Of course, the home button integrates the new fingerprint sensor. We have our backlit capacitive navigation keys for recent apps and back. And of course, they have dual purposes, which we'll talk about in the walkthrough. Toward the top, we have an ambient light sensor right next to our 2.1 megapixel front-facing camera, which is good for 1080p HD video. So of course, on the back, very similar story for Samsung. We have this plastic back panel, which kind of has a hard finish, but feels really nice in the hand. It feels very similar to the metal texture along the sides. So we have our cameras, as you can see, and there are very different locations for the 9.7 inch versus the eight inch. So with the 9.7 inch, that eight megapixel rear facing camera is mounted toward the top and more flush so it doesn't stick out. And that's because it's integrated behind the bezel as opposed to the eight inch model, which is right behind the display. So it does bump out a bit more. So if you want the thinnest tablet, you probably want to get the 9.7 inch. Once again, these are eight megapixel rear facing cameras, good for quality. Wand HD resolution, last year was only 1080p. For the most part, these cameras have the same specs from last year, but this time we lose the LED flash. Returning once again are these little fasteners on the back of the tablet, which work with cover accessories, which are sold separately. So along the side, you can see our new metal frame, which is painted in this case. So it's basically painted to match the gold color, but you can see that nice polished metal chamfered edge, which reveals the raw metal. It looks really nice. Along the right side, we'll find our power button along with our volume controls. We'll also find the SD card tray, which you can eject with the included SIM ejector. Now with the 9.7 inch, you can also see we have a microphone on this side, but if you flip it to the top, you'll see that the microphone is located on the top of the eight inch model. You won't find anything along the left side, but toward the bottom, of course, you'll find your USB 2.0 port, headphone jack, and a set of dual speakers on both. Now the Tab S2 does feature Samsung's new fingerprint sensor. So no more swiping like we had to do with the last generation. Instead, we're prompted to image our finger just by pressing it to the home button. So it walks us through the process and it's pretty quick and simple. Next up, let's walk through the interface of the Galaxy Tab S2, which is powered by Android 5.1.1 skin with the latest version of TouchWiz. So you can see here on the lock screen, we can expand out to see all of our notifications or dismiss them all. So if you want to clear them all, you get the clear all button. You can also swipe down to get to your quick setting toggles up here, and you can swipe to launch directly into the camera, which I'm covering here. Now, unfortunately, what you can't do here is double tap the home button to launch the camera like you can with some of Samsung's recent phones. Taking a look at our main home screen, of course, we can swipe between 
between our available pages and you can see Microsoft has a strong presence here with a lot of their apps pre-installed. We've seen this with a lot of Samsung devices this year. So we can swipe all the way to the right to get to Flipboard Briefing. So Flipboard Briefing looks especially nice here on this tablet. Everything is spread out in this sort of magazine view. So you can see these individual stories, tap on them to expand them out and read them. Now I can modify what feeds in here by going up to settings and you can limit them. So if you don't want to receive news, business, technology, just unselect them. You can also expand them out here to emphasize certain categories within that subject. So if you want social media, mobile, uh, wearable tech, you can select it. And you can also rearrange them by tapping and holding these grab bars on the right. But of course, if you don't want Flipboard briefing at all, you can solve that by pinching in and out on the home screen, or you can just tap and hold the same thing. Swipe to the right and unselect it. It mutes it. And now it's gone, so if you swipe to the right, you can see it's not there anymore. Speaking of that editor, we do have our wallpaper selector, which has been sort of enhanced here for the tablet. So you can see home screen, lock screen, home and lock screens, and you can see all the ones that are available here, which are very similar to the ones available on the new Note 5. We can swipe between our available pages here, select which one we want to be the home screen by selecting the home icon just above it, add new home screens like so, or drag and drop them to reposition them or just delete them. We also have our widgets, so we can scroll through all of our available widgets or just search them. Now with a single swipe down gesture, you can see all of our quick setting toggles up top, all of our notifications down below. S Finder and Quick Connect are available here, and then we have our brightness as well as auto brightness if we prefer it. In terms of our quick setting toggles up here, we have sync, we can turn off. Screen mirroring allows us to wirelessly broadcast the display and audio of this tablet to a compatible TV like my Samsung Smart TV. We have private modes if you want to hide certain files as you can. Smart Stay, of course, monitors for the presence of your eyes and prevents the display from going to sleep while you're looking at it. We also have something called Ultra Power Saving Mode. This is something we've seen on Samsung's phones. Uh, so this will estimate how much time we have left on the current battery, so it really kind of cripples the device to make sure you can still use it under uh, tight conditions. So if you can't charge it over the next few days, this is your best option. It only works in portrait orientation, as you can see here. Uh, so I can add certain apps. A very limited selection of them, so mem memo and calculator. But I can still browse the internet, access my calendar, and see my clock. We also have reading mode, which will warm up the display, which is better for reading text. Uh, we have do not disturb, so if you want to mute your notifications, you can, or you can schedule them. Just tap and hold on the icon, takes you to that control panel. We also get airplane mode and power saving mode. Power saving mode is more conventional, basically dials back screen brightness as well as uh, CPU performance, so we're gonna turn that off for now. Bluetooth, as well as screen rotation lock, sound, location, and Wi-Fi, and of course, just tap on hold on any one of them to get to your control panel. We also have S Finder conveniently located here, which is a universal search for the tablet as well as things outside the tablet. So for example, if I search Android, you can see it automatically searches for Chrome tabs, settings, my files, and I can perform a web search if I want. I can also limit the search by category, time, location, and tags. If I hit category, you can see conversation, settings, images, etc. Time, again, I can select uh, before 2014, next seven days, whatever, as well as location. You can also edit the quick settings here. So we can go up to edit and you can remove whatever you don't want here. Everything is included already. There are no more to add here. So if you don't want certain ones, you can just move them and click done to save them. You can also unselect S Finder or Quick Connect, one or the other or both, and they'll disappear here. So if we click done, you can see that toggle is missing as is S Finder and Quick Connect. We also have quick access to our multi-user mode, which I think is important, especially on a tablet here. So I'm logged in as the main account. I can also add a guest account, so they've limited access here, and I can add a new permanent user, which can log in with their own account, and basically their sandbox from my account. So they can change the wallpaper, download their own apps, take their own photographs, that sort of thing. So effectively, they have to log in as a new user here. So they have to agree to the terms of use, log in with their own Google account, name it, that sort of thing. They can even add their own fingerprint if you want. Now, whenever you need to jump between your different accounts, just swipe down here, go to your multi-user mode here and select the account you want and you can log in here. So again, I can use my fingerprint, jumps right into it. Now, guest mode is a little simpler. It doesn't require any setup here, uh, but it does strip away access to photographs, uh, apps you've installed, that sort of thing. And basically, if they want to access any one of these things, they'll have to log in with their own accounts. Quick Connect allows you to quickly access nearby devices. So for example, my Samsung wireless TV is visible here. So if I want to activate screen mirror and I can do it from here. In terms of these navigation keys, just tap and hold the home button to get to Google Now. What we don't have here is S Voice, so we can't command it with High Galaxy or double press the home button to activate it. We do have a voice assistant here. Okay, Google, what's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester Hills, Michigan? 
Tomorrow's forecast for Rochester Hills is 67 degrees with showers. We also have recent apps that we can see here in the overview of our recently accessed apps. So we can swipe to dismiss them, to close them if we want. And for apps that are compatible with split screen view, you can see we have these little icons right next to the close icon. So I can open up one app on one side of the window and another compatible app on the other side of the window. So now I can resize these windows. You can see I can tap this icon to act upon the window that's highlighted in blue so I can swap between the left hand and right hand side, copy items from one window to paste them in another, uh, minimize the window, maximize the window, or just close it. So with minimize, we get this little badge view here that floats around, that stays in the background, and we can quickly jump back to it if we want. Now we have this floating window, which we can resize to a certain amount here, so you can't completely shrink it down. Uh, and then you can move it around and press the home button to minimize it. Now I can also window ask just by swiping in from the upper left corner. Not all apps are compatible with this, but many are compatible with scaling. So now I have a window view I can resize. I can also tap that icon to act upon certain features. Now I can have up to five windows open at once and I can move them around to access them, resize them, that sort of thing. Uh, it works pretty well here. It's able to keep up, but it gets a little cumbersome to use it this way. So again, you can press the home button to minimize all those windows into these little badge views. And if you want to maximize the windows, you can also just just flick them to the side here, maximizes the window. We can minimize it again by swiping in here, move that window around or press the home button to get to that badge view. Now, if you wanna close these, just tap and hold on them and you can take them up to remove. Now, if you want to do side-by-side -side viewer here, just swipe one app to the right and swipe another app to the left. You can also access side-by-side -side view just by tapping and holding the recent apps button here. So you can select a compatible app here, so like Chrome, and then we can select Gmail. And side by side works extremely well here. So I can browse my email, resize the window, browse the web, and I can jump to YouTube to watch one of my most recent videos here. So let's go to my videos. It's not, I don't make it a habit to watch my videos, <laughs> but here you go. Here, and it's very nice, works really well. Look at the new colors for the Apple Watch Sport, which were just- In terms of our app selection here, mostly Samsung apps, so all of the essentials from Samsung, as well as Google apps, and some third party apps like Microsoft apps, of course, and CNN here, which is, it looks like specifically for Samsung. We also have this magazine subscription app called Next Issue, which you can sign up for. Of course, you do get three months free if you want to try it out. So some of these apps are already in folders for us, like Google Apps and Microsoft Apps, and you can go up to Edit to Folder More Items if you want. So all I have to do is move icons over top of each other to create new folders if you want. We can also edit existing folders here. So if we uh, tap on this folder here, we can open the folder, I guess, and then we can manage it. So we can change the color if we want and change the name. Uh, so now we have a green Microsoft Apps folder. Now for some of these apps, you can see we get these little icons in the upper right corner, which indicates we can either uninstall it or disable it. So if you want to disable this, we can. So now it completely disappears. And if you want to regain access to it, again, you'll have to go to the App Manager. Now now, in terms of Smart Manager, we've seen this before with Samsung. This basically allows us to see our battery status and we can tap on it to act upon it. So if you want to activate one of the power saving modes, you can right here. We have our storage, so you can see 33% is used, uh, so 21 gigs is free. We can see our RAM usage as well as security settings. We also get a clean all button, so it should free up some RAM as well as storage. We can also tap on this again to see what apps are taking up the most RAM. Now this fingerprint scanner definitely isn't one of the best I've used to date. So for example, I'm in horizontal or landscape orientation right now, but you train it in vertical orientation. So it's not very responsive, but it will work sometimes here. Uh, so if I keep trying, maybe it'll work. But most of the time I have to do this, hold it in sort of a portrait orientation, and then it will unlock. So it's a little cumbersome to use. Hopefully we'll see improvements with software. Let's go and take a look at our settings panel, which is very tablet friendly. So you can see your list on the left side and the panel on the right side, and you can just search for whatever you want. So if you want to search for display settings, just type it in, comes up right away, takes you right to that control panel. Again, you can see your list stays present on the left side. So under Wi-Fi, we have basic stuff. If we go to more, we have more options, Bluetooth, as well as airplane mode, data usage information, and we have more connection settings, which includes VPN. We have sound and notifications, uh, so we have different sound modes, so you can mute it if you want from here. You can also control your volume here, so we have three independently controlled volume settings. We have our display settings, which includes screen timeout, smart stay, which you can toggle on and off screen modes. So we have adapt display, but we also have AMOLED cinema, 
uh, AMOLED photo, basic reading mode, and this is a toggle from the quick setting toggles up top as well. So we're gonna leave an adapt display. We have motions and gestures. So we have two of them. We have mute uh, as well as palm swipe to capture, which I use all the time here. So you just swipe across the screen to take a screen grab. We have our application manager here, which is broken down by application manager and default application. So you can see the default application manager here. And then you can see your application manager, which should include uh, disabled apps. So you can see the one app I disabled under the app drawer is here. So if you want to restore it, you can. We have our users, which we can delete or manage here, wallpapers, as well as our lock screen settings. We also have our battery information, including our usage timeline, and you can quickly access your power saving modes, which will explain exactly what they do here. So if we go to the standard power saving mode, uh, we have several options here. So you can kick it in automatically as soon as you turn it on, or you can select it to turn on automatically when the battery drops below a certain percentage. So if you just want to turn on at 5%, you can select that. I'm just going to turn it off. We also have our storage. So you can see how much storage we have left and what's taken up all the space. So system takes about 6.57 gigs. That's quite a bit. We also have accessories. So if you have one of those flip covers, you can turn the automatic unlock feature on and off date and time as well as user manual, which is new. So this takes you to a website, which allows you to browse through the user manual. You have to select the one you want in your language here. And there you go, full user manual for this specific model. And we also have about this device. So again, 5.1.1, and you can go to the software update to check for something new. Next up, let's take a look at the camera app. So we can snap our photograph, pinch in and out. We can also tap anywhere on the scene to adjust exposure and focus. And we do get a manual exposure adjuster right here. You can see, let's get to a darker area. So you can see, you can manually adjust it. Uh, we can also record our video here and snap photographs while recording your video. Also pinch in and out to zoom, pause it or stop it. And then we have lots of settings here. So we have our resolution, eight megapixels is four by three. So if you want 16 by nine, you'll have to drop down to six megapixels. Here we have our settings, which includes video size. So we do have QHD resolution in addition to full HD. We have video stabilization, which is not available on QHD. So if you go to full HD, you can see it's now available. Now, what we don't have here is voice control. So we can't say cheese, shoot, or take photograph or record video. It won't do it here. We also have our effects panel, so if you want to filter your image or video, you can. We also have our timer mode as well. We have several modes to look at here. So we have auto, pro, panorama, visual shot, dual camera shot, and more, and HDR rich tone. Uh, we can also download additional modes here, which takes us to the store. So Samsung has historically included a lot of modes, but they've kind of stripped it down here. We can also tap and hold on these items to move them around if we want. And if you want to know what these modes are, just hit the info icon in the upper right, and I'll explain exactly what they do. So I want to take a look at pro mode, which is a familiar feature from Samsung's latest phones here. So you can manually adjust exposure as well as ISO levels and white balance. So not quite as many controls as you would get on the Note 5. Next up, let's take a look at the front facing camera, which does have face detection. So it highlights my face and that works with some software features here like this beauty face. So it'll actually soften the details of my face in real time. It actually works pretty well. And you can take a photograph just by tapping anywhere on the scene or use the shutter release. You can also hold up your hand here to begin a countdown. And you can record video, pause it, stop it, or that sort of thing. And I have noticed that while recording video, it actually has a real hard time finding the right exposure. So in terms of camera quality, it's actually very similar to the camera from last year, maybe just a bit better. Now we're able to get really sharp and clear images outside, good color reproduction and good exposure, but we can't get that nice artistic depth of field like we'll see on higher end smartphones with large apertures today. But in low light conditions, this camera is pretty poor. Images come out dark and over processed, so they tend to look very soft. Video also looks pretty good here. I recorded in quad HD resolution, which gives us very sharp detail here, but unfortunately we lose any sort of stabilization. So handheld video can look a little shaky, but we're able to get pretty good exposure. Colors tend to be a little undersaturated again, like the still images. Uh, and we do have continuous autofocusing, which does have a tendency to hunt around and can be a little slow. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, testing out the 1.2 megapixel front facing camera on the Tab S2, pretty much the same camera from last year, records at 1080p video. Now I think uh, this camera does a pretty good job here, it's pretty clear and crisp, but it does seem to have an issue with exposure, so it kind of has a hard time finding the right exposure here, so you can see I'm really dark, the background is very light, and doesn't seem to be able to balance the two very well, but for the most part it's actually a pretty decent camera. Taking a look at our Geekbench scores, obviously both sizes of the Tab S2 scored about the same because they have the same specs. Three gigs of RAM and the same Exynos Octa-Core processor. Now compared to the previous generation, we do see some significant gains here, especially on the multi-core score, less so on the single core. 
Now, both of these still fall short of the iPad Air 2 by a significant margin, especially on the single core score. Now, the 8-inch does edge out the iPad Mini 4 on the multi-core score, but the iPad still takes it on the single core score. So in terms of battery life, both tablets are about the same, almost five and a half hours at maximum screen brightness. This is fairly close to the previous generation, although it looks like the larger tablet did lose some ground here while the smaller tablet gained some ground. Gaming performance also looks great on these tablets with these high resolution Super AMOLED displays and the hardware can certainly keep up with the latest games. Next up, let's take a listen to the stereo speakers on the Tab S2 and compare them side by side with some other tablets. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, checking out the new Galaxy Note 5, which picks up a really sleek all-metal and glass design, which is even more compact than the previous generation, while retaining a very large and very vibrant and clear 5.7-inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display, which has been improved for the latest generation. We also pick up many features from the Galaxy S6, including an improved fingerprint scanner, along with wireless charging built into the back. We also get the latest Exynos Octa-Core processor, along with 4 gigs of RAM and you have 32 or 64 gig storage options built in. Now to my ears, both sizes of the Tab S sound about the same. You get the same loudness and the same general quality, but unfortunately that quality isn't so good. It's a little tinny, hollow sounding, and distorted, especially when the volume is at maximum. There's also this sort of digital artifacting in the processing of the audio, so audio, especially when you're listening to voices, sounds really robotic. Now, since both of these tablets are identical, it really comes down to personal preference for size. Now, of course, the smaller tablet is lighter and more portable. It's also more pixel dense, so perhaps this tablet is best suited for reading or carrying this around. The larger tablet is probably better for watching movies. You also have a little more screen real estate, so if you're gaming or multitasking, that may be the best option for you. So once again, the Tab S2 really stands out among Android tablets for that Super AMOLED display. We also have an improved build quality here, which feels much more premium than the previous generation. Fair Fairly competent cameras, good battery life, and great performance from Android 5.1 and a revised version of TouchWiz, which has a lot of nice and improved multitasking features. Ultimately, there is no getting around the fact that these are much more like the iPad than the previous generation, which I don't think is a bad thing at all. You still have the standout Super AMOLED display, and I think 4x3 is a much more usable aspect ratio than widescreen, especially for large tablets. But if you're a movie watcher, you're definitely going to prefer the Tab S or the original Tab S with that widescreen aspect aspect ratio so you have less letterboxing. But for most people, especially Android users, the Tab S2 is a standout option to consider. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.